Hey everyone, it's Agent Mead from Delta Tactical. In this video, we're going to review and go over what I think is the best DPS build for heroic and legendary content. Mostly group play, but it will also work in, uh, in solo PvE play. And that's a Striker's DPS build. First, let's start with the specialization. I've chosen to use Gunner for a couple of different reasons. One is for the ammo regen. More importantly is the added little bit of survivability that this brings to the build because it is an all red build with minimal armor. With Gunner, you get 10% armor on kill. It's not a lot, but it does help. Now, as far as your primary weapon, you do have a number of choices. In the testing I've done in the range, you definitely want to run something with maxed out damage to targets out of cover and maxed out if possible. As far as the talent, I've been playing more and more with Strained. I have run Optimist on this, and I find I'm getting slightly more consistent damage with Strained uh, because I am staying on the trigger for a longer period of time, and I'm getting that added critical hit damage uh, the longer I hold down the, uh, the fire button. The numbers that I'm going to show you behind me here were with this FAL. It's not. It's at uh, expertise level 10, which is as far as I was willing to take it. My primary weapon is the Carbine 7, and they are all set up basically identically. The nice thing about the FAL and the Carbine 7 is they have slightly lower fire rates than the Police M4 or the FAMAS, so you are taking advantage of the fire rate buff you get from uh, the Striker gear set. So it brings it up to a 748 RPM weapon. It's got nice high damage. It's a fairly stable platform to run with. I prefer the weapons that are slightly lower RPM, but uh, better stability. Uh, my favorite is the Carbine 7, and that's the reason that its expertise is ranked as high as it is. I have run this with the Kingbreaker, switching specializations to Technician. I'm not getting as high DPS with that combination as I am with the other weapons using Gunner. You do have options uh, for how you want to set this up and run it, depending on what weapons you have. With the weapons that I'm choosing to use, again, damage to targets out of cover and strained is the way that I've got them all set up. And they all hit approximately the same damage numbers in the range. Uh, the Carbine 7 hits the hardest. But... They're all within a few percentage points of each other. Secondary, uh, any ACS-12 will work very well here to help you get up your striker stacks when you first enter an engagement. I like the rock, I have the rock and roll, so I choose to use it uh, because it's got a 30-round magazine, which means that you generally with, you know, hit one gold bar or heavy and you're at max striker stacks for most of the rest of the engagement. For your pistol, Completely optional, whatever you choose to use. I'm using the Busy Little Bee, again, because I have it. Uh, I have used the Liberty. I have used the Orbit. Uh, the Diceros is just here because. So any secondary will work. The advantage of the Busy Little Bee is you can get some additional damage output from it by taking a few shots because it does increase your weapon damage. As far as the setup, all the Striker pieces are set basically the same max weapon damage and as high crit damage as I could roll on it with crit damage mod. Crit damage, crit chance, weapon damage, uh, crit damage, and I think I said crit chance, crit damage. I meant weapon damage and crit chance with the, uh, with the gloves. With the knee pads, weapon damage, crit damage, and weapon damage and crit chance. What you want to do is you want to get yourself as close to, as possible to 54, 55% for your crit chance and then max out your crit damage for the rest of the build. For the mask, again, you have a number of options. Uh, I've seen this setup uh, with a lot of different players running the Coyotes. I don't like using gear that is very situational. I like to have consistent damage rather than situational damage. And what I mean by that is with the Coyotes mask, the buffs you get depend on your range from target, so you're constantly getting slightly different numbers throughout an engagement. If you're taking long range shots, you're getting your crit damage. If you're in the medium range, you're getting crit chance and crit damage. And if you're close range, it's again, it's crit hit damage. And I meant, sorry, crit chance for the longer range. If you know you're consistently going to be taking longer range shots, you can 
play into this 25% by reducing your crit chance in your build and upping your crit damage. But again, if you start taking shots at closer range, you're losing out on that additional crit chance. So I typically don't run it. And as you can see from this, I've chosen to run the Seska. Uh, it's max weapon damage, max crit chance, max crit damage, and I'm uh, as close as I, could, I, I own to a max crit damage mod. And then for the chest piece, I'm running a Grupo piece again for that additional crit damage. Weapon damage, crit damage, crit chance that I'm still working on, and an 11.7 crit damage mod. So that's the build in a nutshell. Uh, I forgot one thing. I'm using Focus. I've run a lot of different talents on here, and again, you do have options. Um, you could run different combinations of gear in all of these slots. Uh, again, what you're trying to balance out is your crit chance against your crit damage, against your weapon damage. Um, I have run Fenris in here. I do not have a perfect piece for it. Uh, Focus works very well. Unbreakable does work if you want additional survivability. Uh, it wouldn't be my first choice in here. You can definitely go to something with Spotter. I have run this with uh, per the Perfect Spotter with the Uzina. Again, that's when I run Technician and the Kingbreaker. You do get a, a fairly significant damage roll-off by having that piece of armor in there. Uh, and the difference we'll go over in just a second, the kind of numbers that I'm talking about here. As far as the stats for the build... With the FAL, uh, I'm at 52.6 crit chance, 141.7 crit damage, and 105 headshot damage. I am going to try and take headshots where possible. And again, that's where the 8 power scope does come in handy. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to focus the head. Uh, and again, the weapons that I'm choosing to run have good accuracy and stability, so it's easier to hit those headshots than it is, say, with a Kingbreaker, which is a little less unforgiving. 21% uh, health damage. Uh, not listed on here is the 10% damage to targets out of cover that you get from the firearm. So it's a min armor build if your watch level, uh, if you've got that section of your watch uh, rolled all the way up, which I do. I'm at, uh, I'm over watch level 1000, so all of the sectors of my watch are maxed out uh, 50 out of 50. That is the caveat for this build. If you copy and paste this, you will not get exactly the same numbers. You won't get the same crit chance, crit damage, weapon damage, and armor as I'm getting because, again, my watch level is over 1,000. The pulse resistance is because of the specialization. The 10% bonuses that you see down here are, again, all because of the watch level. And I am getting 10% armor on kill. It's not a lot, but again, it does aid with that survivability. There are a lot of situations where I'm at the back of a room and I know that I don't have to pop a, um, an armor kit because I can get some kills. So I typically do that. If I'm getting pressed, I will pop the armor kit for that additional survivability. The two skills that I'm running are the striker shield and a revive hive. And again, uh, I, I'm running in a group, especially if I'm running heroic or legendary in a group, you are going to go down at some point. And the advantage of the Revive Hive is your team doesn't have to come pick you up so that they can continue doing whatever their role has been assigned, whether that be tank or uh, crowd control or the other DPS player. They can continue firing while you're getting yourself back up. Back to the stats, they are both Tier 1s. Uh, it's a steer, uh, tier, sorry, tier 0. The shield will keep bullets off you, but it's not going to protect you if you're out of cover. It will just end up staggering you when it breaks. So bear that in mind. The, the strategy or tactic that you have to employ when you're running this shield is the right shield peak, where you're behind a full-size piece of cover and you're just peeking out with the high magazine or high magnification scope to engage a target, and then you're pulling back into cover to reload. That's how you achieve the survivability when you're running a build like this, especially in legendary content. The Revive Hive has a single charge, so it's enough to pick me up, or if I throw it to a, a team member, it's enough to pick them up. Now let's talk about some of the damage numbers that I'm getting with this. So with the FAL uh, running at max striker stacks, stacks, with five bursts to the head, you can see the damage or DPS that I'm generating. It's 17.2 million DPS. The FAL is in second place in terms of overall output. The Carbine 7 slightly exceeds this. I've seen 17.6 uh, when an everything procs the way it's supposed to. 
the police M4 is hitting 16.9, sometimes 17. The Kingbreaker, when I switch over to the technician class with the gear that I have, is somewhere around 15.8 to 16.5. Again, it just depends on whether or not everything's proccing the way it should. They are all fabulous DPS output web, uh, builds. Again, treat this as a template. You don't have to set it up exactly like this. I'm hopefully providing you with some options or, or getting your mind going down the path of what options you can use with the gear that you currently have. And this is not a new build. This has been out since the Striker gear set was redone with Title Update 10. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you're new to the channel, please consider a subscription. And for everybody, please interact in one way, shape, or form with the video, whether that be a comment, a like, uh, or a share. It does help the YouTube algorithm, and I very much appreciate it. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Please enjoy the gameplay. Secure the memorial and remove the True Sun's forces. If they maintain this outpost, the True Sun's will be a direct threat to the campus. Got a visual on additional hostiles in the memorial compound. They're moving south. There's a gate between you. It looks closed from here. Agent, you'll need to find a way to open that gate.
All clear. I repeat, the compound is all clear. Nah, that can't be all of them. Check the interior while I get Henry's people to maintain the perimeter. Since I've turned the memorial into a base. There's an area beneath you with increased security. Isaac can't access data on this location. Stay alert. I don't know what you're walking into.
pulled upstairs. You can lock that tunnel door from that control center. That should keep them from being able to transport those borders loaded with DC-62. That should keep them from getting more of those mortars. You think close the tunnel is smart? Fuck you! You got the number one! Want to head back up. The team from the campus has taken position inside the memorial. If you hadn't stopped them, I know they would have used those weapons on us, and we would have ended up like Castle. I can't tell you how relieved I am to have you on our side. Thank you. Today, we dealt a great blow to the True Sun's infrastructure. We confiscated a massive cache of chemical weapons and eliminated the stronghold near the campus. You should be proud. You saved a lot of lives today. You were taking a lot of hits. Jesus. <laughs> No way in hell that thing is staying there for long. All right, two chungus, I assume. Oh, they're there. <laughs> 